Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Word of the Day podcast, coming to you, as always, pre-recorded from the RAV4 studios. I'm Jamie Silva, and I am here, as I so often am, to pleasantly explain another useful word. Today's word is tacit. This adjective means implied rather than directly stated. Tacit usually references some sort of arrangement or understanding or exchange that the people involved in are unwilling to talk about openly. In this context, it basically substitutes for the word unspoken. And that's the sense I'd like to focus on in this episode. So, an unspoken agreement between you and your roommate that you won't say anything to the landlord about his ever-expanding mural on the kitchen wall, as long as he doesn't report you for subletting the nook next to your dresser to starving artists, that would be a tacit agreement. Everyone who needs to know what's going on knows what's going on, but because plausible deniability is what makes the world go round, it is in no one's interest to actually come out and acknowledge it. Quickly now, the online definition, which happily is almost an exact mirror of mine. Quote, understood or implied without being stated, unquote. So yes, this is good, but I would just keep in mind that tacit generally refers to hidden transactions or exchanges, which this definition doesn't quite come out and say. Now, a quick etymology interlude. Tacit comes from the Latin word tacitus, meaning, quote, silent, or, alternatively, something that is passed over in silence, done without words, or assumed as a matter of course, unquote. So I really like that last part, the assumed as a matter of course angle. You don't need to check in with someone to, say, see if they plan on upholding their end of the tacit bargain you have together to comment encouragingly on each other's Instagram photos. It'll just happen. There's no need to sully the exchange by, like, writing it up in a contract or really by mentioning it in any fashion whatsoever. One other note on Tacitus. This is where we get the word taciturn, which refers to a person who doesn't talk much, possibly because they're surly, but maybe because they just aren't very talkative, and they prefer to communicate via quiet nods and meaningful glances, perhaps the occasional raised eyebrow. Since, as we are told, the bulk of communication is nonverbal, Taciturn people are generally perfectly able to make themselves understood. They just do so silently or with very few words. By the way, uh, Tacitus was also, I believe, the name of a Roman of some renown. And as I do a little investigating here, I see that that is indeed the case. Tacitus, or Senator Publius Cornelius Tacitus to you, was a Roman statesman and historian around the turn of the 1st and 2nd centuries. And even though his name was basically Mr. Silence, he does not appear to have been the strong silent type since he studied rhetoric for a while and was a well-known orator. Looking over some of his more notable quotes, uh, it seems that most of them are about power and politics and what jerks people can be. Uh, Like this, quote, Men are more ready to repay an injury than a favor, because gratitude is a burden and revenge a pleasure. Well, If I ever write a mafia-centric screenplay, I definitely know what the opening monologue is going to include. Anyway, let's get back to tacit. This word is very useful because these situations pop up all the time where you have some sort of arrangement with someone, but for whatever reason, it is better if it is not widely known or frequently discussed. And I don't want to imply, by the way, that everything that is tacit is by definition super secret or nefarious or you and whoever you have the tacit understanding with are out to dupe someone. This could all be very much out in the open, but still, even then, to call attention to the mechanics of what is going on would be unwise or perhaps awkward. So if you have a tacit agreement with your parents to call them semi-regularly in exchange for them letting you and your friends borrow the houseboat for the occasional party, no one is fooled by this. No one is being misled. But at the same time, it would obviously be quite unseemly, dare I say churlish, uh, for you to propose a formal, open exchange along those lines. This would turn a favor into an obligation, a familial kindness into a transaction Uh, which doesn't exactly warm the heart. Tacit agreements are great because everyone can be very discreet and discretion is often necessary, but they can also lead to misunderstandings. What if you think there is a tacit understanding in the house that the last person to make a sandwich puts away the sandwich fixings, but when you chide your brother for not following it, you discover that he thought that whoever got out the sandwich stuff was supposed to put it away. Feelings are hurt. And then, from that point on, whenever anyone makes a sandwich in the house... They have to, like, officially announce 
Hey, I'm making a sandwich, and I'm putting all the food away after. And if you want me to leave it out, say so. At which point you assume all the responsibility, obligation, and liability for kitchen cleanup. And at this point, please give your verbal assent to this oral contract in front of a third-party witness. This would probably work, but it would also be annoying, and it might signal that you weren't on the best of terms. Tacit agreements are most common among friends who don't need to spell everything out. Though I suppose they also pop up between enemies as well, who perhaps have to be near each other out of necessity, but can still tacitly agree not to acknowledge each other's presence so as to interact as little as possible. It is now time for the examples. Example number one. One of Timmy's favorite techniques was to wait until his mother was distracted, mumble a request to visit a friend's house for the afternoon as he walked by quickly, and then interpret the ensuing silence as tacit approval. Example number two. Marvin and Shelley had a long-standing tacit agreement that whoever rode shotgun controlled the music, but not the windows, air conditioning, or where to stop for lunch. Example number three. It was obviously illegal for the two bicycle repair shops in town to openly collude or coordinate to raise their prices, but the owners had a tacit agreement not to compete too hard against each other, and the profits accumulated. This cartel lasted until young Archie got old enough to competently handle a wrench, at which point he relentlessly undercut their prices and stole their customers. Example number four. After each road trip, Devin would insist on reimbursing Evan for gas, so as not to be beholden to him. But Evan would refuse. Devin would keep insisting, and Evan wouldn't hear of it. And so Devin would find a way to jam a 20 into the seat back pocket in the hopes that Evan would just think that he, Evan, had left it there by mistake. But in reality, when Evan found it, he always knew that he would never just leave a random bill in the seat back pocket, so he would immediately conclude that Devin had left it there. Whereupon, Evan would use the money to make a purchase in Devin's online homemade tie-dye t-shirt store. Devin, however, was able to trace the delivery address to Evan's sister's house, so he knew exactly what was going on. And Evan knew that Devin knew, because otherwise, why would the shipping charges always get waived? But this elaborate routine was satisfying to both parties, as it allowed them to signal how much they enjoyed going on road trips together. And so they had basically a tacit agreement to keep up the charade. Okay, that is it for today's show. And would you believe it, that is also it for the first season of the Word of the Day podcast. We have done 25 full episodes, 26 if you count the introductory show, and this is as good a point as any to declare a short break, uh, maybe two, three weeks or thereabouts. I will use this time, obviously, to cook up more great shows on more fun and interesting words, of which, thankfully, there is a near endless supply. And on season two, of course, we will have more talented voice actors and amateur etymologists, more gratuitous observations about things, sayings no one says, products we don't have in stock right now, everyday usage examples, definitions I agree or disagree with, etymology interludes, and so much more. And at this point, I do have a lot of folks to thank, uh, not least of all, the vast team that we have here at the Word of the Day podcast, working behind the scenes, the producers, writers, editors, sound designers, linguists, pronunciation sanity checkers, dictionary looker-uppers, word suggesters, word rejectors, and so many more. And it is customary at this time, I think, when one is ending a season, to do a short fundraising message, encouraging you all, the listeners, to support the show financially and help us cover our costs. Because right now, you see, we operate on a shoestring budget, and you'll notice that shoestrings are basically free. And that's why we do most of the work for this show out of a shoebox in the middle of the road. We do technically have a way for you to support the show at wotdpodcast.com slash support. And in order to urge, nay, to inspire you to contribute Uh, Let me read you what it says on that page of the website. Quote, Look, if you want to send us money, who are we to say you can't? Mics are expensive, you know. Plus, if you do, thanks to the power of incentives, we will be encouraged to make more Word of the Day episodes of even greater quality, which will make you measurably happier. Basically, everyone wins. It's just that after the dust settles, we have more money and you have less. End quote. Well, if that stirring call to action does not cause the funds to pour in, I don't know what will. Thank you all very much for listening, and of course, if you have a tacit agreement with any of your friends to alert them to fun and interesting things that you come across, hopefully this show makes the cut. It has been a great pleasure to make these episodes for you, and I look forward to many more seasons ahead of pleasantly explaining useful words. For now, farewell. This has been the Word of the Day podcast. I'm Jamie Silva.